COP21. We'll bring in Richard Taylor. He's in Cardiff. He's the uh, commentator and host of the Rich Politics Online site. Hey there, Richard. Nice to see you. So, right, let's... Uh, Wind it back a bit. We'll talk about COP in a minute, but back to what happened in Rome. Very few concrete commitments made in the summit because a lot of people wanted to hear a lot of strong stuff about climate change, about what's going to be done. We're told this is like the last chance saloon, if you like. Why was it so weak coming out of the G20, do you think? Well, I think a lot of this is virtue signaling from politicians we've seen for decades. There have been many COP, you know, events that have happened throughout the, this is the COP26, the 26 event they've had, and nothing Congress come out apart from them going to net zero by 2050, making those commitments. But the bigger issues here are countries like America, the second largest country in the world that is, you know, emitting carbon emissions, uh, second only to China, and of course, India and Japan and Russia, for example. These are the countries that should be around the table talking about what's going on mm. globally, but it doesn't happen. So to me, it's a virtue signaling, eco-hypocrites. I mean, Joe Biden's come in there. He's got a, he's got a car load of 85 cars. He's flown in by private jets and all these politicians coming in privately. I mean, it, to me, it just stinks of hypocrisy, and it does to a lot of the public as well. Yeah, well, is this row kicking off now about 400 uh, private jets coming in for everyone to get together to have this chat? But I suppose they're going to say, well, we can't have got there any other way, can they? Well, of course they could. Listen, we've been living through COVID the last, you know, 18 months to two years, Kevin, and we've no, and we've, we've we've dealt with it through Zoom. We've done everything, conferences, we've had meetings. So why uh, couldn't this be done by Zoom? I mean, it's just a question I like to ask because at the end of the day, you know, these these politicians are coming over, and let's not forget as well, they're going to be treated like kings, first class treatment. They're going to be caviar and champagne in posh hotels. Mm. They're in in Glasgow now as they are currently meeting, and they'll be treated like royalty for the next few days, talking about the climate. It's absolute hypocrisy, and that's all. Well, members of the public, they're, they're aware to it all across social media. You can see it. It's a wash with people who realise that these politicians are saying the right things, but not doing the right They'll things. They'll say that caviar was carbon neutral, of course, the way it got to them. Um, let's wind it back to the weekend. We'll come back to COP in a minute. Joe Biden's initiative for that minimum 15% um, world tax on those very rich multinationals. Is that going to make the world a better place, stop us uh, from having rising sea levels and uh, make it uh, more equality for everyone or not? No, I don't think it is. I think Joe Biden's ideas of what will make the world a safer place are not certainly my ideas. And I think, you know, his proposals... Nothing wrong with taxing with those rich companies, though, well, is there? Well, 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 listen, but yeah, but effectively what happens is that that tax trickles down and, and the lowest paid in society end up paying the bigger taxes. We're seeing that here in the UK, Kevin. We know yeah. that. This green tax, this green tax which they're going to impose on people. I mean, they're talking about taxing meat, for example, here in the UK. I know Biden, we're talking about Biden here, but the reality is these are green taxes that will affect the lowest paid and the hardest working in society. And so whilst I can appreciate taxing the richest people in the, in the, in the world, that's important, yes, I agree mm. with that, but it's not, in reality, what will happen is it'll be the lowest paid in society that will feel the pinch more than those mm. who are highly paid. On top of all this, uh, we've had COVID, you mentioned it just now, COVID to worry about for the last two years. It goes on and on and on, doesn't it? G20 leaders pledged to bat the uh, WHO goal for 70% of the world's uh, population to be COVID vaccinated by next summer. Is it feasible? I mean, bear it in mind, Russia's got this great vaccine and uh, over in Europe, it's still not been passed yet. And yet all the medics are saying it's fine. Politics is really dragging things down. Well, I don't believe it's achievable. You know, there are there are very good reasons, ideologically or medically, or even for some people religiously, why they will not take the vaccine. I am not against people. I believe in choice. People ha should have the freedom to choose whether or not to have a vaccine. And it might be the case that around the world, there are countries that we're seeing right now where people are not taking the vaccine, not because they're against the vaccine, Kevin. This is very important for your viewers and listeners to, to know. It's because they don't believe it's right for them at this time. And we should respect that. We should believe in bodily autonomy. autonomy. When people are being force now if you don't get the job you can lose your job that to me is an is, is absolutely criminal we should not be forcing nhs workers or people in healthcare, especially in the uk richard. or around the world or anywhere to richard. be able to force to have the vax time's caught up with this i wanted to go back to cop is there going to be we've got yeah. 10 seconds for an answer is going to make a big breakthrough yes or no that's all we got time for absolutely not it'll make <sighs> no difference at all they'll still be talking about the same thing the next conference richard taylor host of bridge politics online thank you from cardiff there have a good day